fact, do a part, do in part today, okay? As we talk about freedom, Nicholas read the, uh, the scripture reading that I've sensed I wanted to talk on. Get my setup here. I want to talk about knowing the truth and being free. Knowing the truth and being free. And I'll tell you what my goal is. Get my glasses out. It's a shame I got to use spectacles all the time. I want to encourage us with that our walk with Jesus is to be a progressive manifestation of knowing truth and knowing freedom. So let me just repeat that. My goal is that I want to encourage us. So if you're here, I want you to be encouraged. Okay, that our journey or our walk with Jesus is to be a progressive manifestation, an ongoing, continuing expression, if you will, manifestation, expression of knowing truth, knowing truth and experiencing freedom. That's my goal for y'all, okay? And I'm hoping and trusting that the Spirit will help us do that, okay? The context, so I'm looking at John chapter 8, and this is a familiar section, especially the first part, where Jesus delivers or sets free a woman who has been taken in the act of adultery. You guys are familiar with the story. Of course, the obvious question is, where's the guy, right? Right? We wonder where the guy is. Here's the woman, okay? And these guys are ready to stone her, but we know from the story that their intentions were not just to bring judgment, if you will, upon this woman, really. They had an ulterior motive, and they were trying to trap Jesus because they had a problem with him. He challenged their system, okay? So... I want to go to, uh, I'm going to read it, or pick, we're going to dig, like four verses I've got, okay? And we're going to dig, I really want to hone in on the, the fourth one, but we'll just go through the little sequence, and I'll try to honor the time, but I really want to get to some of this, because I think it's great. I think there's stuff in here. I think these are indeed are ancient words that are going to speak to our heart. That's my desire, right? I, I really trust the Spirit on this. And I believe you do too, okay? So I'm going to start in uh, John 8, verse 29. Rather, 28, okay? See, Jesus had delivered the woman from adultery that was taken in adultery. He said to her, go, she said, uh, he looked, Jesus looked up and said, where are your accusers? You guys remember the story. And she said, none. He said, I don't, I don't condemn you either. Go and sin no more. Now, we can look at that a couple different ways. We can say, okay, he was saying, okay, young lady, I, I, I covered you this time. Don't you do it again. Go and sin no more. Okay, he could have said that, right? It could, we could see that there was an interpretation there. Or he could have said, he could have like quickened her spirit to understand that he was empowering her, that she could make better choices. That's what I choose to believe. That sounds to me more like Jesus, right? He's saying, go and sin no more. You don't have to sin. You don't have to choose this lifestyle. You can choose another lifestyle. Even if some guy comes on to you, you can say no. Okay, so the, 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 the um, Pharisees, they, you know, they had a problem with Jesus anyway. Here they had a problem with him. And, and Jesus says to them, now the context is they're in the temple. And even a little bit before the section that I want to read, it says they're in the treasury of the temple. And I was wondering, okay, treasury, they, that, Jesus just didn't throw that word in there for fun. There's meaning there. The meaning is, I think, is they're in a place of abundant provision. This is being, he's, he's speaking these words in a, in a place that they identified with and associated with abundant provision, the treasury. Guys, he's speaking to us today out of his treasury. He's speaking to us from a place of abundant provision. It's for you. It's for me. It's for us. Okay, now we'll get to my section. That's the context, okay? 
They were, they were still like, who are you? Where's the father? And he's telling them, hey, the father that sent me is with me. They're not getting it, you know? And sometimes we don't get it. Seriously, sometimes we, we have trouble believing that the one who created us lives inside of us. That Father God is here with Jesus said in, in Romans, in uh, John 20, he said, you know, I'm going to be with you and the Father's going to be with you and we're going to make our abode or our dwelling place in you. So if you've got Jesus, you've got the Father because the Father's always with Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Hello? But we have a little trouble with that, so let's not be too hard on the Pharisees because they were getting tripped up with it, okay? Let's show a little grace. Okay, so in verse 29, in verse 28, Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am he and I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Listen, the Father lives in you to teach you. And as we lift him up, we're going we're gonna to know stuff. That, that word know is gnosis or gnoso. And, and it, it means to impart. It means to be closely identified with something. It means to be closely associated with something, to know. Actually, there's a Jewish idiom that says it's, it's, like, it's like the intimacy in marriage. It's that kind of knowing. That's, that, that's what's that kind of word. Like you will know you will know because the Father wants to teach you. He want, and the Son's helping it happen, okay? Come on, guys. This is good, okay? I'm, I'm going to go along to get to my, my fourth verse. Jesus said, as he that sent me is with me, the Father has not left me alone. Come on. He who sent you is with you. You're not in this alone, guys. He's called you. He's, he's living in you. He sends you. Do you ever feel like, I think God wants me to do that? How many, come on, let me see your hand. Do you ever feel like, you know, I really think God wants me to do that? I know there's more of you. You're just being shy. That's okay. <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you, if you're feeling that, that's God. It probably, and if you're not sure, check it with him. Come on. He's not against you. He's for you. You can check. Like, is that you, God? Oh, gee, yeah, okay, I think it is. You know, I'm going to take a step of faith, right? And sometimes God does challenge us. You know why? Because he wants to stretch us. Why? Because he's growing us. Listen, living things grow, and growing things change. Don't be afraid to change. Individually and collectively. This is an exciting adventure we're on walking with Jesus, okay? My goal is to encourage us that our walk with Jesus is to be a progressive manifestation, an ongoing expression, if you will, of knowing truth and being free. Okay, that's my goal. I'm repeating it. Okay, so now Jesus spoke these words. We sang ancient words. Listen, Jesus spoke these words. Many believed on him. Nicholas read it. Listen, the word is quick and powerful. (laughs) It does things. We'll talk about the word in a minute here. Okay, now we're going to get to uh, verses uh, 31 and 32. And these, I really want to camp out on here for a little while. Jesus said to the Jews who believed on him. Now look, now he's specifically speaking to those Jews in the temple area that heard him who believed on him. Now listen to what he says to the believing Jews right there. He says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. That's a conditional statement. You know what a conditional statement is. It's an if-then, right? If you do, uh, okay, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, then it will hurt. (laughs) That's what a conditional statement is, okay? If you meet the conditions the results will come. Are you with me? Okay, this is a four-part conditional statement. There's four parts. And you is in each of the four parts. There's a verb, an action word, and there's you. So this is for you. 
These are ancient words spoke by Jesus himself. If they're in red in your Bible, that's Jesus talking, supposedly, right? We believe. Come on, right? We believe this is Jesus. We believe he talks to us through the Bible. He doesn't just talk to us through the Bible, right? But he talks to us through the scriptures. Let's not limit him. I don't want to limit him. You don't want to limit him. But when we come to the scriptures, let's say, okay, he's got something for me. Guys, he's got something for us here. Okay. Four-part conditional statement. Are you guys with me so far? Okay. So he said, if you continue in my word. What if you don't? Well, then you're not going to, the, 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 the results of the, of the condition, are, you're not going to, you're not going to realize them, right? Okay, now, did you ever know somebody that they, they, maybe they were at a tent meeting or they were at camp and, you know, there was an invitation given and they put their hand up and they accepted Jesus, right? But then they never went any further with it. Now, are we to judge them? No. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, <laughs> evidence of somebody that is like a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know, you all aren't, don't know about them, okay? But listen, Jesus loves late bloomers. I can testify to that. I grew up in the church. I raised my hand. I was baptized. And I'm not going to say Jesus wasn't sincere. Who am I to say that? Uh, you know, there were times when I had little, you know, I, I wanted to do what's right, but, you know, I kind of got off the track and pretty far off, okay? But, you know, in his grace, he got me back on, okay? So let's not judge somebody just because, you know, uh, oh, man, they got more tattoos than the book has, you know, or, or whatever, you know? <laughs> you know, right? Let's not pass judgment on somebody. Jesus doesn't. If you continue in my word, you hear the process, the progress. That's, a, that's an ongoing journey. I'm going to continue. Now, he's talking to Jews who believed. You know, at age 12, you know, I believed, but I didn't continue. Are you with me? But later on, something, I don't know, God used my wife to help get me on track. And then, you know what? See, the thing with Jesus, you can pick up right where you are. You can pick up. Jesus meets you right where you are. And he says, let's go forward. So don't be hung up on the past. Listen, don't beat yourself up on the past. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So don't... don't Settle for self-condemnation. If you're stuck in self-condemnation, just listen to Jesus. He'll deliver you. Because he's the deliverer. Okay, if you continue in my word, right? That's the first part. If you continue, that's the verb. If you continue in my word, second part, then you are my disciples indeed. Okay, then you or, that's the verb, a state of being. Like, don't you want to be a disciple? Sure. I'm looking at disciples. We want to continue, continue in his word. What does that mean? Okay. If you are my disciple, if you, uh, if you continue, thank you, in my word, okay, let me talk about word for a minute. Okay. We're ready to be maybe stretched a little bit. Listen, this contains the words of God, right? We're not going to, but th is this God? No, it's not God, right? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That word in the Greek is logos or logos, okay? In, uh, it says the word was with God, and the word was God. So if I limit the word, word, to just the Bible, there's something that's out of, out of sync there. Are you with me? Okay. So it says in John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh. Who's that? That's Jesus, right? Now, Jesus lives in you, right? By faith. Come on, right? I'm going to just, the word is still becoming flesh. It's becoming flesh in you and me. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, it says in Hebrews. That's how good he is. That's how good he is, guys. He is, I don't have to tell you, but I'm telling you, he's good. He's way good. If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. Disciple means a learner, a pupil. Hello, don't graduate. There's no graduating with Jesus. You just keep going. There's always something. Come on, guys. And, we, you know, we limit it to, you know, oh, the Bible says, you know, 120 years, 72 years. If you get 80, you're lucky, you know. No. Come on. He says we're going to judge angels. He said if you're faithful in the, in the thing, for the, the guy that was faithful with, with 10 talents, he's going he's gonna to rule 10 cities. Where is that going to be? Guys, this is a great adventure we're on. If you continue in my word, that continue. Now, the word I said was, you know, Jesus. It's the, it's the words. Come on, I'm not demeaning the Bible. You're with me, right? But it's Jesus. Listen, if you continue in Jesus, continue in Jesus. You see what I mean? Continue in Jesus. Then you're my disciple, my student, my pupil indeed. Look here now. And you will know the truth. You will know the truth. That word know, gnosko, here back to that, it's like an intimate association with the truth. And what Jesus say in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, truth is not just facts. Truth is Jesus. Jesus is alive. He lives in your heart. If you continue in my word, you're my disciple indeed, and you will know, you will have an intimate association with the truth, Jesus. And the truth will make you free. I don't know about you, but that, that encourages me. That encourages me. I want to be, I want to continue. I want to continue in his word. The truth will make you free. A free from what? What do you want to be free from? We sang about addictions, right? Bad habits, tendencies that maybe aren't the best, unhealthy choices, all of the above, right? Plus more yourself, your own hang-ups, how we hold ourselves back. We all do it sometimes, right? I want to just kind of sum that up in, in, in the freedom. Like, you're going to be free to be who God created you to be. A beautiful, unique, awesome expression of him. If we continue, we continue, we continue. There's still, listen, there's always stuff to, you can can go deeper with Jesus in here, and then you can go deeper with Jesus out there. You know, I, I, I could, it would take me a good while to just tell you the times I've seen Jesus in you guys. Gnosko, listen, I know his heart. And you do too. Right? You know, there's that connection. I know his heart. I see his heart in Jim. I know his heart. There's Jesus, an expression of Jesus, right? I want to wrap it up with a, uh, a story that, uh, about being free. Okay? A couple weeks ago, I had the privilege of uh, praying with a, a, a pastor from from uh, Kosovo, or they say Kosovo. It was a prayer walk team that I'm part of, and uh, we were told that this pastor is going to spend a, you know, a, a few days in this area, and so we met him, and uh, his name is Yaton, 
And he told us that it was during, he told us this story I want to relate to you. He said that when he, it was about, it was in the, I think it was 1995 around there. It was, the war was going on over there. And uh, some Serbs had come into his, to his area. His dad was a pastor, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, owned a farm. And Yatan was a, was a young teenager, about 14 years old. And he was, his job was he kept his dad's sheep. So basically he was a shepherd like David. <laughs> okay. And so he, the, the, the Serbs had came, come into their area. And what they were doing is they were rounding up the men and killing them. And so Yatan was in, out with the sheep. So he came home. Uh, and he, he knew something was going on. His dad was hiding on the property. And when, he, when the uh, Serbs saw him, they, they apprehended him, young Yeton, and they put a gun to his forehead and said, now, where's your dad? And he said at that time, uh, his mother came out, like freaking out and screaming at this guy, like, what are you doing? Put that gun down. What are you doing? Don't you have children at home? Would you want somebody to do that to your son? And Yatan said, amazingly, the guy put the, the gun down. And his, Yatan has a couple sisters. One of them was screaming. And it was, you can imagine, right? Well, at some point, Yatan's dad came out. And they got hold of him. And they said to Yatan and his mother and his sisters, go and don't look back. So he said they went. And they heard a shot. And they knew what happened. And they were refugees. I think they went to Albania and they were there for, I think he said, six or nine months or whatever. Yatan is now a pastor. He has a church. He told us that his, from, that, from that day on, his intentions were to get revenge. We can understand possibly having that feeling, right? He said it took six years, six years. So when he was 20, early 20s, something in his heart changed. And he realized he was being called to forgive them. He said it was a process. You see, Yatan, even though he was, you know, torn up inside, he was continuing, continuing in the word of God. But he couldn't embrace that forgiveness easily or quickly. You with me? But he did. And now his goal has changed from seeking revenge, but we sat around the table and, and talked as we ate. He said, I'm going back, I'm going into that area, or I'm going into the, the area where the guys came from. I guess it was Serbia. I don't know all the, all the details of the maps, but he said, I'm going there to plant a church. And he said, and God's going to help me. Maybe you're here today, and there's an there's a unforgiveness thing that's inside of you, or maybe in your family. These things happen. God wants to set you free. He came to set the captives free. So we're going to trust these ancient words to speak to all of our hearts today and moving forward as we continue in his word 
and are truly his disciples. We'll know the truth, increasingly know the truth, and we'll increasingly be set free. Thank you.